This is Ben Curtin with Tata Technologies. Today we're going to be taking a look at making stretchy parts in Autodesk Inventor. As mentioned, this video is part of an ongoing series by Premier Autodesk partner Tata Technologies. Follow us at autodesk.cadgeekspeak.com or if you have additional questions, write us at autodesk at tatatechnologies.com. Let's first take a look at the components that needs to be built and the, the things you can do to make a part stretchy. In this case, we've got a rubber band type part, and you can see it's really composed of a sweep, but there are a couple things done to set this up initially, including two different sketches that were used to create a couple of extruded surfaces. And you'll see in a little while why those surfaces are created there. But for now, just suffice it to say that they're just extruded symmetrically, both directions. Then we created a second, or excuse me, a third sketch based on those extruded surfaces. So in this case, we just have a essentially a loop here that's drawn and offset from that surface cylinder on each end. I used a couple of parametric uh, relationships here to make sure that they are the same size on each side. And finally, there was a sweep or a work plane created where one of the lines meets one of the arcs there. You can see roughly where that would be located. And finally, the sketches, one was that loop and one was the actual circle itself that's then sketched on there for that sweep. The key here is that we're relating this sweep or any other geometry you want to those extruded cylinders. And notice in this case that we can go ahead and resize this down. I'm going to make this a little bit tighter and more compact because we are going to be saving this out as a template. So in Inventor 2012, there's actually a save copy as template option. If you're using an earlier version of Inventor, just save the part file into your default templates folder and it'll work the same. So I've already got that component saved in my templates folder. So now let's open up just a sample assembly and see how this can work out. So in this case, I'm just going to use create to create a new part in place and we'll give it whatever name we want. And I'm going to select the template that we created and saved in the templates folder. So the part is initially placed, but it has not yet been sized to be appropriate for these other components. So we really don't need to be in that part itself anymore, but we do need to make this part adaptive. And I also had a couple of the, the surface features in the part adaptive when I created the initial template file as well, as you can see right here. And let me just finish out of that component. The last thing we need to do now is to constrain the part to the components for its size. So I'm just going to use a mate constraint using a face to face selection. In this case, it's not an axis. I have to do is a select other so I can get the faces themselves picked. And on this end, it's more obvious what happens because I'm selecting the faces themselves and the part is adaptive and set up appropriately. It stretches to fit between those two cylindrical components. One last thing that you may want to do could be to turn off the visibility of those surface features. So to do that, just simply edit the part. There they are in the browser. Right click and turn the visibility off. 
Now we've got a nice looking assembled stretchy part for use in our assembly.